Now I just upgraded to React version 18 and I'm getting this cancellation error from my use Axios hook every time I request data from the API. Let's look at why this is happening. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we'll be looking at some of React 18's new features, what's changed, and how to upgrade your existing React projects. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. React 18 introduces features powered by React's new concurrent renderer, and it provides a gradual adoption strategy for existing apps, so it won't break everything, but the new strict mode may make it feel like it does. Now, I'm starting out today with a clone of my GitHub repo for Axios hooks, and I can link to that video in the description below. But what we've got here is a repository that uses React 17, and I'm going to use this as an example of how to upgrade to React 18. And of course, you could do this with an older version of React as well. Either way, it's an example of how to upgrade to React 18. Now I'm going to open a terminal window, and of course if you're starting out with a new project, you could just always immediately use React 18 with mpx create react dash app, and then of course you need to put your folder name or project name after that. That's when you create a new project, but we have a pre-existing project and we need to go from 17.0.2 to the latest version. And what I'm going to do is type npm i, then react at latest, and also react dash dom at latest and press enter, and this should upgrade fairly quickly. Yes, and it's already finished. You can see now in the package JSON, we have React 18.1 as of the making of this tutorial. That is the latest version. Okay, I'm once again going to press Control and the back tick to open the terminal, and I'm going to type npm start, and we'll take a look at our application once we get going. I'll drag Visual Studio Code to the left. We've got our application, and it looks like it's working but things are not quite what they seem right now. So I'll drag this over and press Control, Shift, and I to open the terminal window. And here in the console, not the terminal window, the console window, and here in the console, we see React DOM .render is no longer supported in React 18 and use create root instead is what they say. So until you switch to the new API, your app behaves as if it's running React 17. So while we installed the new version of React in our dependencies, it's still acting as if it was React 17 because we haven't made the other change that we need to for create root. And we're going to do that in the index.js. So I will pull our browser browser back to the right and pull Visual Studio Code back to the full screen. Close the terminal window and let's open up the index.js. Now this is what we're used to seeing, but we can make some changes here. The first change is our second line where we import React DOM. This now needs to come from react-dom slash client. So we make that change there. After that, I'm going to copy and paste a little bit in and also remove something. So what we'll have is highlighting react-dom.render. Remember our console warning said render no longer works for us. We need create root, which I now pasted in. So we're now we're defining this root variable and it's react-dom.create root. And here we have the document.getElementById and select the root. We were previously doing that down here. So let's go ahead and remove that from our code. And then we take root and call dot render on it. And this is what they want to see. This is pretty much what you see in the official docs right now. And this works. But there is another way to do this that you might see, and I want to highlight that while we're here also. Instead of bringing in React DOM, you can just destructure and bring in create root. If I could type root, would be good. Now we have create root there. I can remove all of this to the left of create root and just start with that remove the semicolon, and then we're going to chain render to it. So instead of having root.render, we'll just have render there, and I'm going to tab this over for a little organization. So it's create root, it has the document.getElementById in it, and then we just chain render to it. And this also works. It's essentially the same thing, just a little bit less uh, syntax in there. Okay, now that we've made these changes, we should actually be using React 18. So I'm going to drag VS Code back over, 
and yep, our app is no longer working. We get the canceled here and it doesn't refresh either. Every API call is being canceled out, or at least that's what it shows. Let's look at what may really be going on and talk about those changes to strict mode because this is what is causing it. Now, strict mode is always in our projects by default, but we can remove it. It's something you use in development mode really to, of course, get more warnings or errors and build your app accordingly. Now, the easy thing to do would be remove it, but we don't wanna do that. We wanna learn from what it's telling us and it can highlight some issues. This whole new strict mode in React 18 has definitely been up for debate. The developer experience has been a little bit so-so because it makes things break. And we're going, why is this rendering twice? And that's actually what it's doing. It's rendering twice. And we run into problems when we didn't expect that. So let's look at why they're doing this first. In the future, it says React, they would like to allow React to add and remove sections of the UI while preserving state. So they're working towards the future here. And of course, to do this, it says React would unmount and remount trees using the same component state as before. So they're kind of giving us a push, a nudge towards the future and just putting this in development mode right now. At some time we might expect this to be in production as well. So we wanna start working towards it. Now basically it says components are going to be resilient to effects being mounted and destroyed multiple times. So where we run into problems is most effects will work without any changes, but some effects assume they're only mounted or destroyed once. That's where the issue comes in. When we assume that the effect or the component, if you will, is only going to be mounted or destroyed once. That can cause issues in the code. So now let's look at our use Axios hook and the problem that we're having with it when we assume it's only going to be mounted or destroyed or both only one time. So here's the hook and we are creating a controller inside of the use effect in the hook. This controller can cancel the fetch request. That's great, that's what we want, and it will happen when the cleanup function is returned, and that's okay too, but we never expected that to happen twice. So an abort controller causes an error, and that populates our error message. So the thing that we're running into is we're returning in the hook, the response, the error, and the loading, but after we get the error, we're never resetting the error. So even though the hook unmounts and then remounts, what happens is we still have that error state. It was set and never reset. Remember, React wants to work towards unmounting and remounting using that same UI state that they're talking about. So that plays along with what they are saying and the problem we're having is we have an error. And even though the second time it mounts, we get data, we're never resetting the error. So what we need to do is set error to a blank string just as it starts out up here. So you could say the new strict mode did help uncover something that needed to happen inside of this hook. So now if we go ahead and save that and pull this over and let's look at our app, now we're getting jokes again, and the refresh works as well. The app is once again working. So we did uncover something because of the new strict mode. So overall on the new strict mode, my advice is to leave it in and begin working with it now. Here I'm back at the index.js, leave in react.strict mode, realize that it's going to render twice in development mode only once again, but it's going to do that to help you catch things that you might improve upon in your components. Another new feature in React version 18 is automatic batching. Well, React has already done some automatic batching, but now it does more. So let's look at the code examples they have here, and I'll just drag this over to full screen because they do a great job with sharing this information. And we've got before React 18, only React events were batched. So you can see we have a handle click function. We've got a set count and a set flag. So we're updating two different pieces of state, but it says React only re-renders once at the end, and that's batching. And that's what we're used to. However, in a set timeout, those two setters that we saw before would cause two renders because it didn't have batching 
outside of event handlers, essentially. So set timeout promises, some other things that may cause two renders will now only cause one. And we can see that in the example that they have below. Now with React 18, once again, this still batches, that's handle click, but the set timeout they're using for an example also batches, so it will only re-render once at the end now. And one further note on that, if you would ever need to skip out on that automatic batching, in other words, not use the automatic batching, you could use flush sync. Flush sync allows you to wrap the setter, and then, of course, it will go ahead and re-render on each of these state updates if you use flush sync. That is to continue to use the old behavior instead of the automatic batching that's now available to you. And I'm going to quickly search the page for other notable, and there we go, other notable changes. There's a few others I wanna highlight as well. And one big one is no warning about set state on unmounted components. Previously, we would see this a lot if we tried to set the state when the component was unmounted. We would usually get a memory leak warning and we would use an is mounted variable often to avoid this. And I discussed this in the Axios hooks tutorial. So I'll come back over and drag VS Code back over here as well. And let's go back to this use Axios hook. And you can see I commented out the let is mounted equal true. In the past, we would have used that, for example. So we would have is mounted here. And then before we would set the state, we would have something like is mounted and. So we were making sure is mounted was true and we would set it to false when the component unmounted in the cleanup function. But that's not necessary. And as I discussed in this uh, Axios hooks tutorial that again is linked below in the description, uh, you don't really need to use is mounted at all. And there was a supporting article for that. Instead, use the abort controller, for example. But we're skipping that pattern altogether. And I'm glad to see that React kind of agrees that that was not a good pattern to go with. Because now they're saying, Basically, it was used in scenarios where setting state was fine and the workarounds made the code worse. So they have removed that warning. We'll no longer see that. Also, no longer suppression of console logs. It was rendering twice in the past, but many times it suppressed one of the console logs. Now we'll see all of those. So get ready to see more console log messages with React 18. Also improved memory usage. So going back to that memory leak warning, now unfixed memory leaks that may exist in your application will actually be less severe than they were before. Okay, so this is by no means an exhaustive list for React 18. We've just covered some of the basics and some of the questions students have asked me immediately when they were having problems with their apps that were using React 17. So among other new items, React 18 also has introduced five new hooks transitions, and suspense features that I look forward to covering in the future. I hope the basics I've covered today have helped you get started with React 18 and prepared you for some of the changes you'll face along the way. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.